Hello, Church of the Palms friends, and welcome to our devotions. Today is April 15, and our passage for today comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now, as an elder myself and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising the oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders, and all of you must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him the power forever and ever. Amen. Through Sylvanus, whom I consider a faithful brother, I have written this short letter to encourage you and to testify that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. Your sister church in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Jesus receives a multitude of titles in the Bible. Which one resonates with you the most? Jesus as King of Kings, as Son of God, as Son of Man, as Son of David, as Teacher, as Redeemer, Savior, as Light of the World, as Prophet. There are so many ways to think of Christ. Is there one of these or another one that has you connect with Jesus more personally? My favorite way of thinking of Jesus is as a shepherd. I love the term shepherd. I have loved it forever because of the comfort it brings me. I loved it from the well-known piece by Johann Sebastian Bach, Sheep May Safely Graze. I have loved its imagery of a leader watching over its flock and the feeling of safety it brings. The shepherd term has grown even more with every trip I have made to France, England, and Scotland's countryside because the beauty of the landscape is incredible to me. Fields and mountains of rich shades of green, interrupted by the many white and black living creatures feeding on the grass, completely oblivious to the world. I could sit there and watch the stillness all day, as it is such a peaceful scene, one that I go back to in my mind when busyness is at its worst. I have spent countless hours just watching the sheep, just being sheep, feeling safe and unthreatened. No wonder we think of counting sheep to fall asleep. One of my wild and unrealistic dreams would be to live on a farm with a few sheep, it is poetic, but I know it's not the real world. However, with my fascination for sheep, I have been following this woman on social media, a young woman farmer in Northern England with bright red hair, which is why she's called a red shepherdess. I love to learn about the work she does. She labors in the fields endlessly with her husband and baby girls strapped on her back with her several sheep dogs who run all day long to round the woolly animals as needed. 
In fact, right now is lambing season, and I am in awe of the care that goes into making sure that each lamb is delivered safely in a barn, well-fed, the mamas are taken care of and kept warm as much as possible, and once everyone is safe, they are released in the fields again. And this is exactly the kind of work that Peter is talking about in this passage when he says, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising the oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you do it, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. There are countless leaders in the church who shepherd others willingly. Our church has a lot of leaders. The elders are the great shepherds who oversee the great decisions of our church. And then the deacons care for the health of the church members and our shepherding deacons have their small flock. And it doesn't end there. The tutors are shepherds of their little learning lambs. The food pantry volunteers are feeding the sheep. The music ministry leads the larger flock musically. The caregiving leaders lead the other caregivers. The family ministry has a huge flock of little ones to shepherd, and it goes on and on. A wonderful colleague of mine retired this April 2024, a musician who served this church faithfully for 35 years. He shepherded me when I transitioned to our large church, giving me some great words of wisdom. We collaborated on a couple of projects also, and I was all... it. I was away when he was recognized on his retirement celebration, but the incredible outpouring of love that came for him, who was loved for his humility and his leadership, reminded me how our role as shepherd will have an impact on many lives. This friend of mine earned his crown of glory through his humble service and leadership. There are so many tending to the flock of God everywhere. It is beautiful to see. All this so that our chief shepherd, as Peter says, when he appears, will grant us the crown of glory. The Lord, our staff, our shepherd with a staff to comfort us, who brings us to a field where we may safely graze under his watch and be completely at peace. Let us pray. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.